On the last leg of our trip, we traveled from Liverpool to Shelburne, Nova Scotia. We met up with friends and family for a delicious meal at the Sea Dog Saloon. And we kept a close eye on the tropical storm Chris that was forming south of us. We couldn't believe our luck in the weather. We had planned for 14 days to make this trip, and so far we haven't had any delays. My father-in-law, Dave, joined us for this part of the trip. Madison and Amelia took the next two days to spend time with family at a cottage nearby. We were still keeping a close eye on Tropical Storm Chris. It looked like it would be going up the coast of Nova Scotia, so as long as we were able to round the point within two days, we wouldn't see any of the weather. One thing that really surprised me about coastal cruising is that while they were dealing with a heat wave on shore of 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, just offshore, where we could still see the land, the temperature was dipping to 10 degrees. We had jackets, hats, and mittens on. Our trusty dinghy, which I've nicknamed Plan B, has already tried to escape from us two times. Here she is with her new rope. The Atlantic coast is riddled with harbor authorities that have man-made breakwaters to protect the fishing boats. My dad has stopped at this wharf several times Every time I come to the south shore of Nova Scotia, I'm amazed at the color of the water. But don't let the color fool you, it is not tropical. The entrance to the breakwater is very shallow, so stay as close as you can to the green entrance buoy. Once we were safely tied up, we made our way up to the Harbor Authority to ask for permission to stay overnight. We were granted permission and even offered free power. The Harbor Authority fish plant had closed down due to a fire and it was not very busy at this time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Probably too cold to swim, eh? <laughs> Looks like the Caribbean, but it's not the Caribbean. No. <laughs> the white sand beaches and turquoise water seemed to go on forever. I was amazed at how few people were here. I've never seen such a beautiful beach so empty. The top part of this beach is close to walking because the piping plover nests there. We were very fortunate to have a friend who lived nearby in Barrington. He came and offered to drive us into town so that we could resupply and get some fresh haddock. And this guy hung around just long enough to get some scraps. We finished off our great day with a game of cards before calling it a night. Join us next time as we leave Cape Sable Island and travel through the fog to the Tusket Islands en route to Yarmouth. We arrive in Yarmouth just in time for their seafood festival. Oh.